Hi everybody, my name is Tom and welcome to my very first video. As you can probably tell by all the things around me, I am a very big fan of horror and it's been a pretty important part of my life ever since I was a kid. You see this? House of a Thousand Corpses? That movie came out in 2003, which means I was in grade 3 when that movie came out. And as soon as that thing came to DVD and video, my family bought it and we literally had a movie night with it. With popcorn, all of us watching it. It was a, honestly a pretty fun time from what I remember. So yeah, needless to say, it's been a heavy influence on my life since the very beginning. So why are we here today? I don't know. Lately, I've just kind of had this itching and burning sensation. Not that kind of itching and burning, don't worry. An itching and burning sensation to do something creative, to actually start filming stuff, to get my voice out there and heard. And what a better way to do it than to actually talk about a recent movie that has come out and that a lot of people have been actually talking about, Skinamarink. So I don't know a lot about this movie. What I do know is that it's in a genre of analog horror. And once again, even that I'm not too familiar with. The most that I've seen of it is like all that stuff in video games. Give me a sec. Do do do. Analog horror. Analog horror is a subgenre of horror fiction and offshoot of the found footage film technique, often cited as originating online during the late 2000s, early 2010s. Makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah, I remember watching Blair Witch Project also when I was way too young. But I think I might have been too young that I honestly just had no idea what was going on and just zoned it out. Whatever. That's neither here nor there. Skin and Yeah, this movie's been literally everywhere. All over fucking, all over YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. So, why not give it a shot? Little description. Just so I know what I'm getting myself into. Uh, two children wake up in the middle of the night to find their father is missing. And all the windows and doors in their home have vanished. Okay. Sounds pretty fucking scary. Uh, initial release date, July 25th, 2022. Kyle Edward Ball, all right, box office 2.1 million, budget 15,000, okay, all right. So as much as I do love horror, it's been a long time since I've seen a new movie by myself, alone, in the dark, maybe a couple snacks as well. <laughs> Hell, I think the last, like, new movie that I saw was the new Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Couldn't go to the theaters to see it um, because COVID, in case you've forgotten. Yeah, I remember watching that and I think that was like the newest thing that I looked forward to seeing. And even apart from that, when I do watch scary stuff, it's all my favorite things that I just rewatch over and over and over again. Like for example, the first Conjuring. I love that movie. I will watch it over and over again. It's so good. <laughs> things like House of a Thousand Corpses, <laughs> Evil Dead, Groovy. The Thing, <laughs> Top horror movie. The original thing, not the 2011 remake. Oh my god. We're gonna talk about that at some point also. I need a drink. But yeah, anyways, I wanna get to watching this movie. So, let's go do that, and we'll come back. Alright, here we go. That's fucking scary. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that at all. Oh, I really don't like that. But now I'm cold. Let's get back to it. Wow. Okay, I can say with confidence that that scared the hell out of me. First things first, this goes without saying, if you have any form of sensitivity to flashing lights, do not watch this movie. Okay, so we're following the story of two siblings, Kaylee and Kyle, as their father goes missing. We get a glimpse of the father and the mother, actually, like once in the actual movie. There's a little section in the intro where the father is actually talking to somebody about how the child fell, but that's about it. So just as the movie goes on, it seems as if physics is broken. There's one scene where, well, first off, the camera isn't like filming anybody. It's just random sporadic shots, mostly in complete darkness. Like one of the first weird shots was Kaylee and Kevin looking at a chair that is just sitting on the ceiling and things just start disappearing around the house. The toilet disappears and there's a little scene of them moving buckets in the bathroom. It was a very weird sensation watching the movie. To be totally honest, it felt like it was dragging for a lot of it, but now that it's finished, it seemed like it went by really fast. I, I don't know. It had me on the edge of my seat, but at the same time, extremely tired. Hey, I have a blanket just like that. It's right here. I don't know if that makes sense, but... So, like, I found myself really feeling for these kids. I, I don't know. I have two nieces that are similar ages of uh, the kids in the movie, and I just kind of pictured what it would be like through their eyes if it was them, and my heart was immediately broken. <laughs> There's one scene... By the way, I'm getting into spoilers in case you haven't noticed. There's a scene where, when it's just Kevin, he manages to call the police, and he's talking to the police, and he's telling them everything, and they're asking him questions about his surroundings and whatnot. And he goes, the doors are gone, or the doors is gone in like a kid's voice. The person on the line is like, the, the doors are gone? And yeah, the description that we read earlier about two kids with a missing father and all the doors and windows disappearing in their house is very accurate. There are a few jump scares that actually kind of got me. Jesus. 
Jesus fucking Christ. Hi. Oh my god, there was the one scene at the end where everything goes black and you can see the little eyes just staring at you. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. And the eyes are just looking directly at you. As soon as I saw that, I was like, no, I'm, I'm done, I'm out. Once the light turned on, the eyes, you can actually see that they were part of like that little telephone toy on wheels. And then the lights went off, and then the eyes came back. I, I, I don't know why, but that really got to me. <laughs> Another thing about this movie is that I think I would probably need to watch it again because there probably are some things that are just scattered throughout randomly in the movie that will help you piece together the story more so. I think. But if I'm ever watching this movie again, it's not going to be on a weekday night when I have work the next morning and I have to go to sleep very soon because this is something that will probably give me nightmares to be totally honest. But at the end of the day, I had a blast watching this movie. It's been a while since I've watched the horror movie on my own, with the lights off. And yeah, I noticed that uh, when stuff gets scary, I stress eat. <laughs> you can tell I haven't gone grocery shopping because my snacks consist of old wine gummies, saltines, and Diet Pepsi. The snacks really helped throughout the movie, but overall, I will say it's a good movie. I could see it being polarizing. I can imagine some people watching it and them completely hating it. I didn't have the best idea of what analog horror was going into it, but I had a slight idea. So I can imagine somebody not understanding what the genre is all about and being just like, what the fuck am I watching? God damn, that fucking face is still in my head. Ugh, that one really got to me. I don't know why. Ugh. If you've seen it, please let me know if that face is also just killing you right now. Ugh. There's a moment at the end of the movie when you hear Kevin's voice and he says, can we watch something happy? And I honestly feel that right now because I cannot go to sleep without watching something funny. There was also a section at like 75% of the movie where it just said 572 days. And is that like the amount of time that passed in that house? I got no fucking idea. <laughs> At this point, I'm just rambling. If I had to rate the movie, I would say 6 to 7.5 out of 10. Like, it was really slow. But it made up for the fact that it was spooky. It got me with some jump scares. And those kids' voices. It really made me feel for the kids. I really didn't want them to go away. I really didn't want them to get hurt. But we all know what happened to Kaylee, so... Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for the video. I had a really good time watching it and I'm having a really good time filming and talking about it now. If you haven't seen the movie, I suggest you watch it and give yourself the full treatment. Put the lights off, watch it alone. Ideally, wear some headphones. I'm really happy I didn't do that. But if you're up for it and think you can handle it, honestly, give it a shot. If there's anything that I missed that you really like about the movie, leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know why you love the movie. Let me know why you hated it. Let me know why you're in between. I wanna know, I'm interested. But if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. That's gonna be it for today. I will see you in the next one.